Um, and now we've got Bria Schopenbauer from Michigan State and Avery Lockwood from Indiana University who will be able to hopefully shed some light on life in the Big Ten. Um, both girls and they can do kind of a little intro in a minute here, but both of these, these two have been lucky enough to participate in U20 national team camps. Um, so they'll be able to shed a little bit of light on that. They both came from Midwest United, so came through our academy program. So I'm sure we'll have some questions on that as well. So um, welcome. Thanks a lot, you two, for joining us. Um, Avery, if you'd like to just start and just give us a real quick bio, um, a brief of kind of where you come from, where you've been, who you've played for, and what what you're uh, what you're doing these days. Sure. So I'm currently playing at Indiana University. This is my freshman year this year, so next fall I'll be a sophomore. Uh, I played at Midwest, probably well since it became Midwest United, and I played in the Development Academy on a great team. <laughs> One of the best, if I'm being honest. <laughs> and now I'm just at home, like everyone else. So very cool, player. very cool. Well, welcome, thanks. And and you've also played a little bit with GRFC. You're part of that um, inaugural GRFC team as I think what a 16 year old. Um, yeah. And and come from Rockford, uh, in in Rockford right now, right? Yep. Cool. Right. Well, welcome, welcome back. And uh, and Bria, over to you. Um, I'm Bria. I'm from Hamilton, Michigan. I'm a freshman at Michigan State. I played on Avery's club team at Midwest United um, since it started. Um, I'm just at home kind of relaxing, working out when I can, just trying to keep myself busy. Cool. Yeah, well, welcome again. And I know, Bria, you played a little bit last year around your already busy schedule with the RFC, right? And I've played a little mm -hmm. bit there. And um, as, as I mentioned, both Bria and Avery have been in the last couple of years have been in the to U.S. Youth National Team camps, which we'll talk about a little bit later as well. So thanks a lot. Um, so we're going to go to discussion topics and I've got a few little topics that I'll kind of throw out and you can kind of tag team and one, one can answer first. And some will, I'm sure you guys will have the same answers. Some might be a little bit different. So we'll kind of go through that. Um, so. First question, which we started with everyone really, and, and Avery, maybe you can lead the way on this one, is um, how's isolation going? How's um, training on your own? How's taking classes on your own? What, what's your schedule looking like? How are you coping? Um, and, and what are you up to these days? Yeah, so I'm pretty lucky and my next door neighbor, her daughter used to play professional basketball and train me when I was in high school. Um, so she gave me a little like gym where I've got some weights in there. So I've been working out with my dad and my little brother. <laughs> and we, we throw on some weights usually in the morning. And then um, my college team, they sent us a whole conditioning packet and a lot of like technical work to do. And it's like a pretty, it's like a day-to-day -day schedule. So I do all that stuff, I'll run, which is it's a lot more fun getting your running done playing soccer than just running. but. I do that. I'll do my technical work. Um, and then, of course, I've got to do some school. Still trying to figure out my <laughs> schedule. <to Yeah. laughs> up minutes, but uh, yeah, that's about it. We've been doing some challenges, too. We did this uh, juggling with a tennis ball challenge. So that's my, okay. my team. But yeah. How'd that go? How many juggling with a tennis ball these days? Um, so we switched back and forth between the weeks. We did tennis ball for the first week. I think I got to right foot. Um, hmm, at least in the 60s. Left foot. Okay. Uh, I think I got higher. Left foot, 40. I don't know. I'll stay some. I'll stay some, yeah. Both we'll be like 80s, 90s. Very Not cool. Okay. Beginning, but, you know, when you do it every day, you get better. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm guessing Bria can do about that many as well. I don't know if Bria can do that many with a soccer ball. Never mind a tennis ball. All right, Bria? <laughs> yeah. <That was> <laughs> uh, so, Bria, same, same question for you, Bria. What about uh, isolation? How's that going for you? And uh, how are you keeping busy training, keeping up with classes? Um, yeah, pretty similar to Avery. I wake up – I try and wake up um, decently early, like not eight thirty, nine 9 o'clock every morning just to, like, kind of stay in a routine. Um, and mm -hmm. then I'll – 
most of the time I do my running in the morning just when it's cooler outside. Um, so I'll go run like a few miles and then um, Michigan State sent out like a few different packets. One of them's like a body weight um, circuit type of thing. So I'll do that in the mornings as well and then get some touches on the ball outside. Um, I don't have like the luxury that Avery has of using a gym because I kind of live in the country so I don't have very many neighbors by me and all like the schools and everything is closed so I just have been doing a lot of body weight stuff and just like using what I can um I was in online classes before this started so it hasn't been that big of an adjustment for me but just like managing my time has been more difficult just because I don't have people to do my school work with I just have to like find time to do it on my own but it's been yeah. good Cool. Good stuff. So I think from both of you is, is trying to just keep to a, a schedule. I think that, that's mm -hmm. important. And, and I, I had a feeling you guys were both sticking to that and getting out of bed in the morning and getting your work done and, and keeping on a routine because that's probably what, what you're both used to, just like a lot of our DA players are. So good stuff. Um, well, we'll start from the beginning and, and kind of go quickly on this bit, I think. But we do have some younger players um, on the call who are maybe 12 to 14 kind of age, what's, what we refer to as those key like development age groups. So, Bria, why don't you start there? Um, what did that look like for you? How did you like get started in soccer? What was your first club experiences? What do you think um, key lessons you maybe had, if you can remember back to all those years when you were in that area? <laughs> Yeah, so when I was that age, I was playing, I don't remember who I was for, but I was playing up like two years, I think. Um, so I would say like, if you can do that, like I would recommend that, or even just like training with boys and like people that are um, at like a higher pace and physicality and like level than you are really pushed me to um, just like, the best of my ability because i like that at that age um there's like a variety of ranges of like where people are everyone's kind of at different like skill levels fitness levels like people are growing so some people are really tall some people are still really short and so just playing with older people kind of taught me to play fast and like play physical and i wasn't the biggest one on the field obviously because i was two or three years younger than a lot of the girls so it just kind of taught me like ways around that and <clears throat> Um, like how to use my strengths to my advantages and find opponents' weaknesses. So I would say definitely just like speed of play and like technicality at that age is something like to really develop and focus on. Yeah, and that's awesome. So, so you talked about either playing up a little bit or, or playing with boys sometimes, I mm -hmm. think either in training sessions or, or trying to do that just to to, to work on your speed of play, which I think is really interesting because you've always been, at least as long as I've known you, you've been one of the most physical, the tallest, and strongest players. So it's interesting to know that in those development ages, you were playing with people that were faster, stronger than you, which really made you develop technically, which then when you did eventually go to your own age group, which is probably about 15, something like that, mm -hmm. 15, yeah. 16, then mm -hmm. you were really able to excel and, and work on that. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's great. Great story. Great, great, um, great experience. Avery, what about you? How did you um, think back all the years to getting into soccer? How did you get into it? Where were your youth years spent and what doing? And what do you think were some of maybe your biggest lessons or things that helped you grow? Um, so I think I started pretty early in club soccer. I think it was the one thing I actually like, stuck to. My parents had me play like, all different sports. But um, I think I... I played up one year, um, mostly from like, I feel like 10 to 13 maybe. So like thinking back on it now, probably that helped because I was like a bit smaller um, when I was on the team then too. So probably similar to Bria with just um, being able to play with uh, players who are bigger and stronger than you. And then you have to work around that too. And then, I don't know, just playing as much as you can, working out. Yeah skills really <clears throat> yeah and and i guess to follow up on that avery and I'm, I'm sure you want to tell the story but we can do it short rather than uh of when when you weren't playing much and you had to go find a different team and that came from playing up at the time didn't it and you were the player that i guess maybe in youth soccer 12 and 13 year old terms you weren't the 
you didn't have the usual success story that most like Big Ten players have, and and you want to kind of touch on that without bashing me too hard um, <laughs> on what your experience was and and when maybe you tapped out there and you you had to find other routes and where what you learned from it maybe. Yeah, so um, I'm not exactly sure what age, but it was like that 12 to 13 age range. Um, Lewis is my coach, and I was playing up a year and. I was not getting much playing time, sitting on the bench a lot. And uh, that's like a pretty crucial time where like, it's really good to get a lot of game experience. So, and I wasn't getting that. So I had to actually leave and find a different team. I went to Alliance and played there. And I just was a very different like role on that team where I was playing a ton. Um, I got to be a little more of a leader. And so I think like when you're that age, it's not that you have to be on like the absolute best team because obviously like it's not the time when college coaches are like watching you. I mean, unless you're like insane, but I feel like that's really rare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then what do you think, I guess Avery, so when you when you then played and then you, I think you were gone for maybe a year and then came back, um, but definitely a different player um right around when the both of you changed too right so put you kind of with your own group and you went and played with your own age instead of playing up like you had done in the past what do you think really changed in your game you talked about being a leader um do you think you physically developed a little bit faster and stuff too or what, what, anything else that you thought was a big difference though yeah and I, I think because i was playing so much more than i had been my confidence just grew and i was more used to playing and then just my, I think it was my overall confidence. And then of course, just playing more, you get more comfortable. And then I think that really just played a big role in coming back and being able to like step on a team and like earn starting spot and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And it was obviously a great story to, to see you grow and then come back and, and play and be really successful there. So I guess that kind of takes us into the next part of that timeline, which was when you and I think actually Bria same team was pretty you maybe in the old age groups and you had a pretty good team together and, and players were developing and then I think the next year was the first time and Avery you can kind of start on that one it is you won a national championship as a youth player um, I believe it was was it you 16 you 15 are you 16 one of those ages one of those I think in the old USYS and yeah how was that can you remember as as part of that journey how did that feel what was that as an experience how did that help you grow was that something you wanted to do like, all your life to that point or was it just another step in another club game for you so um that was a huge year because i feel like that was different than the leagues are now because we were in like mrl but then also like national league so we were playing so many games and then you also had state cup in there too so i feel like we just kept like winning our leagues and stuff. And so the build up to the national like championship tournament, I feel like that was like, a, like took a really long time, but uh, the team so much fun and the, the experience going there because we traveled all over and that was just like super fun, especially because we were winning. So that was cool because, and then it was such a, it was like the first time we were on like a really big stage. And I feel like since, we won. It was like the first time where, like, I realized this is like, like it took all year to get there and like all the hard work we put in. And it's crazy because even when you make it to like the national championship game, it's not like you have to always play your absolute best game. Like it doesn't always happen that way. And it's just more about the entire like journey throughout because you'll have like better games and then games where you're not so good. But I think it was just such a great journey. And then as a team, we all really worked together and bonded over that time. So I think that was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Bria, anything the same or different for you in that experience? I think yeah. that was your first year, wasn't it? Was um, first full time year. With us. Yeah. <clears throat> so that was, I joined a little bit after Avery did. I played on Avery's Alliance team for like a year, actually, I think. And then when she went over, I was kind of like, I think it's my time too. So I left and then um, I sat out like half a year just based on like paperwork and whatever player cards or whatever it was. Um, so the thing that was my, I think it was my first full year. I don't remember, but um, kind of everything that Avery said, but also like 
when I think of that tournament, I just think of like how ridiculously hot Texas was. <laughs> and like, it was like 115, 110 degrees, whatever it was. But like, that has helped me so much. Like, that's just something so small. But just like going through that, like with my team, like that national championship game was, it was tough. Like it was physically demanding, mentally demanding. So just having like my teammates with me, like not even just on the field, like on the bench when we would go for a water break and just have um, everyone running over with water, asking me if I needed anything, like having you tell me, I don't know, just like kind of build up confidence, like that we can do it. Um, And then when we actually did, it was kind of just like, it was such a good feeling to know that it was like Avery said, we played hundreds of games building up to that. Cause that was when we had tournaments in North Carolina and Florida and regionals. And um, so it was, it was a big step just cause that was like the first time I think when we had worked that hard for something and accomplished it. And it was with um, like all my friends and it was like important for me now, just looking back on it, it really helped me like mentally and physically kind of set, a set a standard as to like where I need to be and just kind of build off of that um, to where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. And then I guess just to fly through it, the, then the following year, you two both managed to go back to that national mm-hmm. championship game. Um, the game didn't go as well as the last one did. Right. And mm-hmm. lost on the penalty shootout, I think, which, which is obviously disappointing. What, what's, do you have really bad memories of that one or is it kind of the same on the journey as far as getting there was, was a huge accomplishment? Yeah. Um, kind of the same thing. It was a really big accomplishment to get back, especially that we had won the year before. Um, and I honestly, like the second year, I feel like we played better competition. And I remember like tougher games that year, just like the room <clears throat> was a lot harder than our first year was there. Um, and we played the, we played cup. So the same team that we had played the year before. And like you said, it wasn't, we didn't play a very good game um, and lost in penalty shootout. So I guess it kind of just like reminded me that just because I work just as hard as I did the year before, doesn't mean that that result's going to just come my way. Like it's, it soccer is a game of um, like hard work team, like teamwork, but also like skill and just what way the ball goes. And, um, that game was kind of just a PK shootout to a PK shootout. So losing that way is tough, but it just kind of reminded me of like how hard I have to work to get somewhere. And just because I get there, it doesn't mean I had, can work any less. I should work even harder once I actually reach the final stage. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then Avery, um, you guys, both of you were in the kind of the same timeline, um, although different birth year, you both then joined the DA program when we got that, which, kind of allowed you to to both focus on it year round and play in a 10 month season, uh, train three or four days a week, like most of our players are doing now. Um, How big of an opportunity was that? And and how much do you think that really helped you and your training habits and and getting ready for the next level too? I think that helped a lot because the training is more similar to what you get at like a college level where it's very consistent, like every day, almost sort of thing. And then the competition just got better too, as we entered that league. And it was like, we were playing the top girls who were going to big schools. So that level, you had to raise, rise to that level too, and raise your own level. And so, and that's when you have like college coaches watching you too. So that adds a whole nother like intense atmosphere. So I think moving to that stage was like, really great timing too but then also like really key in my development and yeah. moving into college yeah and it was kind of nice for you too because you got that kind of next step right when you'd like bria touched on winning a national championship you always think what well, what i learned now i know you guys were part of this one we were all together with it is you win a championship and the difficult thing if you're going to be successful is as soon as you win it you get to like celebrate and smile a little bit and then it's kind of onto the next one isn't it and you you're always looking for that next step in that process of how do you get better so that timeline I thought was really good for you too. Um, what about then Avery, you were you were lucky enough, I guess if we want to use the word lucky, but I know there was a lot more that went into it than luck um, to then go ahead and, and win, go out of your club career on a national championship. And um, what was that experience like? And, and, you know, winning the DA national championship last year, which as everyone else knows, these two were part of our first female national championship. We'd won one other with the boys years ago. Um, so winning that in USYS and then moving over to DA to win 
what is the biggest of the biggest in, in youth soccer. Um, what was that experience like? Um, it was a super helpful experience because it was that really intense environment that we were playing in and then also playing against the other top um, players in the nation. So it was a great way to send me off because I was like playing some of my best soccer at the highest level I could. And then having all that confidence to winning and then going into my college season, it was like, I don't know if you get much better than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bria, how was that for you to finish off your club career like that? And obviously get the experience of a DA national championship is one thing, but then to win it as well. How, how were those things? Yeah, it was good to kind of finish on a high note and just like, cause like you said, for the last um, few times we played in those games, it was like, we could celebrate kind of that for like a week or so, whatever it was. But then once August came again, it was like a new year, like a clean slate, but kind of just going out on that was like, like I can still celebrate it. Cause like, I don't ever have to play a club championship again. So like we kind of went out on top, which is really exciting, but it also helped. Um, after that, I played with GRFC for a few games. So just like being at that level, already in a national championship game, like help me be able to transfer that over to know how quick and fast and physical I have to play and <clears throat> compete with those college girls. Cause most of the girls we played in that tournament are big 10 SEC, ACC girls um, at D1 school. So I think it was uh, really helpful for our development and just like to kind of set the bar. Yeah. Yeah. And I know, and I know for Bria's side, I know I remember back to that event and think, um, I remember the sem. I think it was the semifinal where we played against Chicago, and mm -hmm. you had one of what I thought was one of your better games that you you played probably ever for us, um, and and got a lot of. That was I think the day that the national team coach first came and was like, "We'd love to invite you to camp." And and I know Avery, you had some experiences in playing against like some top national team level players, right? And and players that like Bria said went on to big schools to be successful. So you really felt that that um, helped get you ready to that college level, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Um, Avery, any other memories you have from those national championship days? I mean, I know <laughs> I remember playing that national championship and leaving the field and getting hit in the San Diego traffic and getting to celebrate in a traffic jam for about two hours. And by the time you guys all made it back to a hotel, I don't think anybody could move or keep their eyes open, right? That was the, yeah. the light of that celebration, wasn't it? Yeah, I liked those too because you got to – put your little name farther up the board every time yeah. <laughs> and we'd always do something weird. <laughs> so like oh, yeah, you that. Go. wasn't that the no. tournament lewis were you not there for that like at the beginning yeah yeah i had uh tony tony cried like every game every time we won a game he would just cry <laughs> <afterwards>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's on the record. We are recording this, so we'll. Uh, I'm glad that it's official that Tony did cry at every oh, game. That's, that's good for everybody to know, and for a lot of his players that are on this call to also know that Tony does cry at games when he wins. So that's exciting. Thanks, guys. Um, so I guess to, to back up a year or two um, and just touch on, because I know a lot of the players on these calls, and, and the process has changed a little bit here um, with the college recruiting thing with, I'm sure you guys are aware, but but like some rules have changed now, so it's not <clears throat> happening as early as possible, um, as early as it was, I think, especially when you two started the process. Mm -hmm. um, but what was your college recruiting and college selection process like, Bria? Why don't you start us off with that one? Because I know Avery's story is a little bit different. So mm -hmm. how, how was your process, Bria, in selecting Michigan State? How did they find you? And mm -hmm. how did you come to that decision? Um, so I it started probably like the NPL MRL. So like all of those college showcases um, in North Carolina and Florida and like obviously the national <clears throat> championship games. Um, so playing in a lot of those like big um, championship games, like regionals and even state cup, like things like that um, mm -hmm. just kind of drew a lot of coaches like to our games, uh, which was good so that they could like see you play. The more they see you play um, obviously helps. Um, so I kind of just started off by, like calling coaches. This was probably like freshman year, maybe, because like you said, we started a lot earlier. Um, so yeah, just calling a bunch of coaches and kind of going through you at that point, because it was um, like, I couldn't directly contact. I had to go through you to get the email or whatever, mm -hmm. but just um, staying in contact with them. So I 
would say that's really important for um, younger players. I don't know when they can start emailing that whole thing, but I would just say like, make sure you keep up on that because that's something that like talking to coaches now, um, even my coaches at uh, Michigan State, like they like to hear from you, even if it's just like a random thing, like, hey, here's my game schedule for like this upcoming tournament. Um, like hope to see you there. Just like hope your family's doing well. Just like reach out and let them know you're interested. Um, and then sophomore year um, went on a lot more visits, just like camps and stuff um, at a bunch of different schools. And that's when I kind of started narrowing it down just like for my likes and my dislikes in the school and um, what I was kind of looking for. And I also kept um, my major in mind. So I was a, went and I was a nursing major. So I wanted a school that had a good healthcare program. So I also kind of had that in the back of my head when I was looking at schools and I had it narrowed down to like two or three. And that's when I really kind of just started talking to my family and talking to Lewis about everything, like what he thinks is best for me, um, like what my friends and family think is best for me. And ultimately, ultimately it is your decision, but I think just having um, those people who like grew up next to you um, give you their opinion is also like very important um, to where they see you. It could be different or the same as where you see yourself. Um, and then I ultimately committed at the end of my sophomore year to Michigan State. Why, um, what was the deciding factor for you? I know you, you said that you talked to a few different people, which I agree, I think that's a great way to do things. What was the deciding factor for you though that made you want to be a Spartan and mm -hmm. make the decision that you've made now? Um, so the, the last three schools that I was looking at was um, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Michigan State. So Arkansas and Tennessee are obviously um, pretty far away from home, but that was something <laughs> that um, was it like family's important to me. Um, so that was something I kind of kept in my head as well, just how far away was I willing to be from everybody. Um, but that, I wouldn't say that's like why I made my decision to go to Michigan State. It was more just like the atmosphere and um, the nursing program was very good there. So um, that was something that was like very important to me. Um, and also like the family atmosphere that like the coaches and like the teammates showed when I went on my visit there was just like, I felt like at home and it was a good distance away. It's like two hours away from my house, maybe a little more. So um, I can still go home if I want and visit. But um, I think the deciding factor for me was just like the way that they looked at the game of soccer. So it was um, like competitive as always and like wanting the best for me um, to be the best, but also just like the understanding this because some schools um, like with national team camps and with all of that stuff, um, especially professors are, it's really hard with a lot of them because like they only allow you to miss a certain amount of days of class and like with labs and blah, blah, blah and all this stuff. Um, but I thought the professors were very understanding, just like meeting with the academic advisor and some of them and coaches too, just like understanding priorities and like family obviously is very important, but also like if I have an opportunity to play um, at a higher level, like for the country that that should be um, like very important. And I should be able to miss a few practices or classes for something of that caliber. Yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Avery, what about you? And I know your recruitment process was a little bit different, but why don't you start us off from, commitment and then what kind of happened from there and again what were the factors in your decisions yeah so like Bree, I started pretty early my freshman year that's when I started like emailing a ton of coaches going to a bunch of the ID camps and then um I got some I got an offer from University of Iowa pretty early on and they put like a bit of not like a ton of pressure on me but like a little bit of pressure because they actually that was one of the few schools that actually like threw an offer out and um, it was a good one. So I wasn't really sure if I was going to get anything else. Cause I mean, it was a big 10 school, um, not like in the big 10, it's really nice with my, it's not like not too far. My parents could go there. So I made that decision. So I committed like end of my freshman year. Uh, I think it was the summer going into my sophomore. So I was committed yeah. for three years and then 
Um, I actually took my official visit in the fall of my senior year to the University of Iowa. And um, when I was there, I just didn't find myself being like excited to um, be there next year. Not that there was anything wrong with the girls there or the coach. It just didn't feel like the right fit for me. Um, sitting on the practices, it didn't feel like the atmosphere I wanted to be in. So that was a stressful time because like I wait three years and then it's like, this is where I've been planning to go. And then I'm like, I really don't know if I want to go there. So that's when I started talking to you and my parents and I was like, oh, because <laughs> that's pretty nerve wracking because I have everything set up. I'm already accepted. I didn't have to do like what everyone else does about uh, my SAT or getting in. And then so I decided to um, decommit because you couldn't really talk to coaches before you decommitted because, I mean, I guess you could, but no one really wanted to. So I decommitted, and that was pretty nerve-wracking time for me because I didn't know what was out there. I didn't know what coaches had available or if they were looking for other people in their program. So once I decommitted, I started uh, emailing a ton of coaches, and uh, I went through Lewis, too, and he helped me and contact coaches. So I started – I like start the whole recruiting process over again. But the nice thing about doing it um, later in my senior year was I actually got to take my five official visits. So I quickly like line those up and it was super nice because I paid for everything. So it was pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so I went on like all five and then it was still a bit stressful because uh, not all the coaches would be pretty honest with just like what they could offer me or what they had available. They're kind of like keeping that, I don't know, like secret a little bit, which is super stressful because it's my senior year. And then um, I was still playing though during that time. So I could have them come watch me in games and stuff. And then um, still didn't have a decision by I think December. And that's when we had a showcase and that was like, gonna be a big showcase for me. And a bunch of coaches going to come watch me play. And then I think, like, the second game, I sprained my ankle. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Real bummer. But I was actually talking to Erwin, my coach now, when he was at Duke, because Lewis has a great connection. And then <laughs> he's taking the job at Indiana. And um, we talked once he got that job. And then it seemed like everything fell into place. Um, I liked talking to him when he was at Duke and I liked his philosophy of the game and what he wanted in program and it fit nicely because I could come in and be like a pretty big part. So I just went for it and I didn't have any officials left, but <laughs> my dad had been on campus and he said it was pretty. He liked the baseball field. So oh God. <laughs> just, just did it. That's awful. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's awesome. I mean, we've had some pretty interesting stories. You know, we had that. I told you guys we had Bolter and Paul on the other day talking about their college stories and one transferred, one played NAIA. And, and it's just interesting to hear more kind of different stories, I guess, that, that players have continued and not take what, what we would say is the more, I guess, the straight road to, um, you know, ACC or a top school like that. And then the national team, it's, it's, it's interesting to see there's so many different routes to get there. So, Good stuff. Um, I guess quick on college, and then we're going to move on to some questions here. Um, what's the college soccer lifestyle and experience been like for you so far? Just just quick, Avery. Um, I know you're both playing in the same league, so that's nice. But but what's that been like for you? What's been maybe the biggest challenge? Um, how's it been so far first year, other than the last couple of months, obviously? Yeah. So the biggest difference from club was the speed of play. And then once you get to this level, like everyone's fast, everyone's strong. So you just have to adapt to that. And um, obviously school brings a different challenge with it too. And then just, especially with traveling so much and then you miss so many classes. I mean, that's always a challenge. So you really have to be on top of things. And it's just like, your season's not that long though. So it's stressful at the time, but then once it's over, you really miss it. So just getting used to like the style of play. And of course it's a new coach. So you have to like see what they expect of you and then new team. So it's just like a new challenge, but all good things I'd say. Yeah, really good. Bria, anything the same or different for you in your experience so far? Um, yeah, the only thing I would add to that is just like, 
Um, and practice intensity also increased a lot, um, which I think is because game intensity increases. But, like, um, college soccer team, like, especially, like, a lot of the bigger schools um, are, like, a lot of the best players from club teams that you have played. So you'll probably – like, the teams that you're playing probably have a lot of girls that you'll play in college. So um, just, like, taking that in and having all these girls on one team just automatically – um, makes everything a lot more competitive and faster. And so I would just say like, which actually is very helpful just to prepare you for games. Um, so we scrimmaged a lot during preseason and um, like right away, like Avery said, it was just a lot faster. And the first thing you'll notice is that everyone's fast, everyone's big and everyone's strong. So just um, technicality really comes into play then and just finding ways around um, that. So yeah, that's the only thing I would add. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Well, you were both obviously had great first years and as we expected and, and i'm sure we're only going to get better from there so we'll we'll uh who won the game when you guys played oh we did of course yeah guess who scored <laughs> <laughs> guess I, let score. I let her score i let her score i let her score okay good I good I, Ray, I don't know if you should say that <laughs> <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> it's recorded remember um well good well what about then to the next piece um i know we want to spend a little bit of time talking about u.s youth national teams um bria why don't you just quickly take us through how that process happened for you uh when that call came what what how what the process was like for that i know the da was a big part of that for you yeah. and getting you in front of those coaches but but what did that process look like how did that happen um it started probably in 2017 maybe that was my first camp um, so that was U16, U17, whatever that was. Um, so pretty young, which was good to just have that experience. And they, it was in Florida at one of the showcases. Um, one of the representatives from like our region or whatever came out to me and just like kind of started talking to me and then emailing me and we talked back and forth. And then I got invited to a camp, um, in December after the Lakewood Ranch tournament. Um, and that was my first camp, which was cool. We played two games against Haiti. Um, and like, I got some playing time in the first game, like 20, 30 minutes, maybe. Um, and then I didn't get called back for probably about a year. Um, so just like during that time, I kind of just focused on the things they told me that I needed to work on and, um, like what I needed to do to get back. And then, U19 team, um, same head coach, called me and invited me back to a camp. Um, so I've been, for the past like few months, I've been going to like a decent amount of camp. So just, um, it's been cool though, to just like see how much I've grown from uh, the start. Just, uh, they're very honest at that level with every camp you'll have like an individual meeting and they give you kind of like a sheet and it will just say like, for me as a center back, They'll say, you need to get better at this, this, and this, and you check these boxes off. Um, so it's good to just kind of get that feedback um, every camp. So that's something I can focus on in between camps. Um, but having that year break where I didn't go to any camps really kind of just like put everything into perspective as like how hard it's really going to be uh, to get there. Um, so definitely playing again in those national um, championship games and for like a really high caliber club helped me just like get the – like get seen by people and just like have a lot of those coaches come to the game. So yeah, it was really cool to be able to play um, with Avery, especially at the last like three, two or three camps, whatever it was. But so yeah, it was cool yeah. to be able to know somebody there. Cause at first I didn't know anybody, but yeah, it was cool. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. I know it was a process and I think it's really interesting too in you getting that call in and then whatever you did in that first camp, getting loads of lessons from it and, and mm -hmm. being able to go back and maybe kind of compartmentalize a little bit and reevaluate. And, and as you say, kind of focus on your game and, and improve and then be ready for the second time we got back. And I know the feedback I got from the coaches then was, was you did so much better that second time and you seem more comfortable, more relaxed. And mm -hmm. like you say, from, from being continually invited now, hopefully that's a good thing and shows that you're in that pool of players, which you firmly are. So it's awesome. Avery, what about you? I know you've um, got your first call in, in, last fall um how'd that process go for you and what was the level like once you got there 
Yeah, so mine's much more recent um, when I've gotten into it. But I got called in, and it was the um, camp where they did the friendlies. So they split us into two teams. And we played against Brazil and France. Uh, first game, I didn't get many minutes. And then second game, I started and I think played like half or something like that. But um, it was definitely a different experience the level of play, it's amazing. It's just another step up from college. Everyone's extremely good. I mean, you're the best of the best and the environment is extremely intense. And that was just, you had to get you adapt to that. And um, of course, learned a lot of lessons, but it was my first camp, it was difficult because it's just a new thing and like the nerves are there. And then once I got back to my second one, I felt like much more comfortable, more confident <clears throat> and um, it was just cool because at that level, you really get to see like what you need to work on and compare yourself to the best players at that level and to see like if you can hang with them. And of course, if you're there, you can. And it's just, it was like a constant reminder for myself that I was like, I belong here. I can play with all these girls. <laughs> so it's like a battle on the field, but then also like a battle in your mind too, just a confidence piece. And um great experience playing with girls all across the country and the coaches are so knowledgeable and especially the friendlies were super cool to play against foreign players because we got to see their different styles of play they're extremely technical so it was super cool and just great experience and a great like eye-opener of what I need to do and change in my game to make it to that next level. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know, and that was a great experience. I know a lot of our DA players actually got to see you both play in um, in that tournament, which I thought was really cool as well for two uh, young kids from Grand Rapids to be playing against France and Brazil. I thought it was um, a really special moment, wasn't it? And as, as Bria said, although you weren't on the same team that week, it, it was so nice to be in the same camp and, and be there together. So, yeah, very cool. Well, um, let's get to some questions uh, from the players, and there's some that I think... Uh, we've touched on already a couple of them, um, but but I want to jump to a couple that maybe we haven't talked too much about. Um, and I don't know if Meredith Vance is on the call. And if she is, she's probably getting really nervous right now for getting called out. <laughs> um, Meredith, if you're there and you want to shout out your question, if you remember it. No, maybe she's not. All right, well, I'll give you Meredith's question. Meredith Vance had a question of how do you manage the balance of soccer and academics? So, Avery, if you want to take that one, um, how does that go? I know you had to do it in DA, but but how is that in college and how do you manage those two things? Um. <laughs> Don't worry, Meredith. We're, we'll figure it out. You just got to hit the mute button at the bottom. <laughs> no worries. Um, so, for me... Uh, I was not great at it at first, but the one thing that I found that really helped me was I got a planner where I plan out my time and make like schedule and deadlines for myself. And really even now I have to do that. So that's like the one thing that really helps me get everything done and just to write out like all the tasks I have to do with school and when I have to turn stuff in. So I think that's like the key thing for me. Yeah, keeping on top of the schedule, very good. Um, next question, Bria, was from Sophia. I don't know if Sophia's on the call either. Sophia from our U16. See there, Soph? You figured out how to unmute or not? Yeah. Hi, hey, um, Soph. Can you remember what your question was? I, yeah. Um, Go for well, it. You guys kind of touched on it a bit, but how different was the play of the game from college to going to a national camp? Go for it, yeah. Bria. Huh? Go for, Go for it. it. Oh, okay. Um, uh, you'd be surprised by how much faster it was. Going from club to college was a big step of um, speed of play as well. But I would just say, like, how fast, not necessarily decision-making, but just, like, how fast the ball actually moves. So the pace of your pass was what increased. Um, going from college to um, playing on the national teams just because – um, obviously everyone's um, the best of the best there so people are just constantly like in your face pressing you so like you got to get a ball where it has to be 
um, in order to kind of get the result that you want um, and to keep possession. So that was probably the main thing was just like how hard your pass has to be. Um, and decision-making did increase a little bit just because teams are high press, um, especially against the United States. They're just always amped up to play us. So um, it's good to just kind of get that like under your belt with, and the knowledge of how fast you do have to play um, like one to two touches um, maximum, um, especially as a center back, like distribution um, is a lot more important. You have a lot more of the ball. So um, it's, a very key role in order to just keep the ball and swing it from side to side um, and just be patient. Cool. Um, and then Taryn is on. Um, Taryn, you, you there? Can you, uh, you know how to unmute, don't you, Taryn? Yeah, I do. Taryn DeShane, you. first of all. Taryn Kelly, you can go next. Taryn, your question um, I thought was a good one. Um, you want to ask that to Bria since probably doing a few more camp you can touch on it? Okay, so I'm not going to lie. I really don't remember what question I asked. <laughs> okay, I'll help you out with it. I wrote it down at the end. It said, Thanks. how did it work on missing school for training camps? Oh, that was a really yeah. good one, an interesting one. Good question. Good yeah. memory, Phil. <laughs> um, it was difficult um, at first, kind of just my camp this year, the first camp I went to, like, during my college season was actually during the first week of school. Um, so that was difficult just because I didn't really know what I was getting into because I've never been in a college class before. Um, so it was difficult to start off by not really meeting my professors and just kind of telling them like, hey, I'm going to be missing the first week of school. Like it was kind of rough at first. Um, but I would just say like, make sure you like have a relationship with your teachers and professors just it helps a lot in the way that they'll treat you as a student. Um, if they like know who you are, they're going to tend to be a lot more understanding than if like you're just another name on a piece of paper type of thing. Um, so my other camp that year was in December. That was the Nike friendlies that Avery was talking about earlier. And that one fell over my finals week. So <laughs> that was tough as well. But um, kind of like I said, like I had, over the semester, like made that relationship with my teachers. So a lot of them were a lot more understanding and um, they just allowed me to either make them up <clears> online <throat> or kind of get them proctored when I was at camp. So a lot of the times what they'll do is just send all of your tests and quizzes or whatever you have to do um, to like the proctor that's at camp or whoever it is. And then whatever day or time <coughs> I have to take it, um, I'll just take it in a room with whoever it is and they'll sit and watch me take a test. So um, it's for sure a different atmosphere, but you can still like get your work done and you have time at camp to do so. Yeah, cool. Very cool. Great question and uh, good insight because I think those are things that most people don't know you have to deal with. So I think the advice for, for sure in, in getting to know your professors and having that relationship and that communication skills to, to get around that is, is a big one. So good job. Um, Taryn Kelly, are you on? Last question here. Um, you want to ask your question to Avery? What was one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome to get where you are now? Great question. That's very good. Um, I think my how my recruiting process went when I decommitted, I think that was one of the biggest things I had to overcome because um, while it was a super cool experience going on all the visits, it was extremely stressful and like not knowing where you're going to go or what the plan was or what was available. That was <clears throat> stressful for me. And um, like during that time, you're still like going to high school and everything. you have got tests to take and you've got practice. So I think that was one of the hardest things I had to overcome and uh, have the mindset that it would still work out even though wasn't working out right in that moment <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was i mean it was a huge leap of faith wasn't it i guess in, in you trusting your abilities and i guess also trusting fate if you believe in fate or whatever that is you would end up in the right place like uh, i'm a big believer that these things always work themselves out and everybody ends up finding the right pathway and yeah that was a, a huge leap of faith for you well cool um a couple of the questions guys as we're getting to the to near the end here um 
quick one can be a quick answer for both of you. Um, Avery, you can start us off, and you're not allowed to say Bria. Who's the best player you've ever played with, and why? Oh, God. And then the next question is going to be, so you can prepare in your thought process, who's the best player you've played against, and why? Um, well, I'll take it to when I was at the camps. Um, Katie, can't really say her last name. Duan <laughs> from University of Minnesota was probably um, the best player to play with. She's like one of the most hardworking players and she plays in the center mid. So I would play with her at camp and I'd play against her too. But she's super creative and like sees the game extremely well and then is super skillful too. And then also like an amazing teammate too. She's always talking to you and encouraging you. So awesome. Um, then what about what about against for you? Against if I think to the camps, um, when we would scrimmage, I think Alexis Spanstra, I played against her in the middle. She was extremely hard to play against because she's like lightning fast, but then extremely skillful too. And she'd make runs like all the way up past the forwards. So that's extremely hard to track. <laughs> so <that was> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, cool. Bria, what about you? Best play you've played with or against? Um, so Alexis Spanstra is actually the one that I was going to say for played with. Um, just because she's so dynamic with her movements in the middle that um, like as a center back, that's important um, to have a midfielder who um, is willing to do the work and willing to get to the spot and just create space for everybody else. But I think what makes her so special is the fact that she's like one of the most selfless players that I've played against, um, like, and knows when to be selfless and when to be selfish. Um, so there'll be times where she'll make a 40 yard sprint clearly just to make space for somebody else. Um, but like, she's willing to do that in order to advance the ball forward or, um, like get it where it needs to be. So she was, she would be the one that I would say played with and then played against, I would say, uh, me official. She is a center forward from UCLA. Um, she's just very, um, like big, strong, fast, and also technical and is like a player who doesn't need a lot of space in order to do what she needs to do. Um, so she can not even be fully turned and have a shot on goal. So she was um, one who really made me like push myself like one-on-one -on -one defensively. So I think she would be the best player that I've played against. Cool. Awesome. Um, last couple here, guys. And um, Bria, you can start with this one. It's kind of two questions rolled into one. Um, what's your best, for all the youth players that are on the call, what's your best memory of playing youth soccer, training youth soccer, your, your youth soccer journey? And if you could do it all again, is there anything you'd do different or is there anything that you think was like most important or you'd give advice to any young players um, to stick to? Um, I would say my favorite memory was probably our DA National Championship win. Um, just because like, it was kind of like our last, it was our last game together. And um, that tournament was kind of like, so obviously like Lou, you weren't there for our coach. We had Tony for like the first however many games and our quarterfinal game, I think it was, was just, it was very stressful. Like we had to win by a certain amount of goals in order to go through and somebody else had to not score as many. Like it was, I don't know, it was mm -hmm. very yeah, anyway, so we were both playing at the same time. Oh, gosh. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, Bria, anyway. Carry on. Anyway, so, um, it, like, the feeling after that, like, quarterfinal win kind of just, like, let us know that we were there for a reason. And so, like, winning that um, championship game and just, like, having that, like, last night with my team was just, like, really special and – so that was probably one of my favorite memories. And then something that, um, I don't know, something I'll do different, you said? Different or something that you think was most important, you know? Um, most important, I would say, is probably just, like, everything, like, the DA has um, done for us. Like, it was just, like, a whole nother level of competition. And um, I would just say, like, make sure that you guys are, like, pushing yourselves in practice and like 
working as hard as you can because like sometimes you can get away with not working as hard or like kind of I don't know like not doing everything you should be doing like you can get away with it working as hard as you have to not as hard as you should um so just like knowing that for your future like you're not gonna be able to get away with that so kind of just like set it now in stone so that way you don't have to like fix it later very cool very cool thank you um uh, avery same question for you best memory and anything you'd maybe done differently or was most important in your journey through youth soccer um i think my favorite memories were from that um 2019 national championship tournament that quarterfinal just everyone knows tony <laughs> jumped up and down after we won <laughs> so and cried and cried <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. And then yeah, when we all like dogpiled after we won the PK shootout, that was crazy too. Um, <laughs> and just so everyone, knows, I I tipped the the cup, the trophy up when we. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> okay, um, one thing that I think is super important is um, just going to practice every day. It can get pretty tedious, and sometimes it seems like, oh, I don't want to be here. But I think it's super important to always remind yourself, like, why you're there and how much you love the game and that it, it, you are, like, lucky to have this opportunity and just, like, give everything you have into practice and know that, like, you shouldn't take it for granted and just, like, enjoy it and work as hard as you can. Yeah, very cool. Thank you. Um, we got one more other question come in. We can probably just ignore Tony's questions, can't we? Like we normally do. But <laughs> if Emerson, uh, Emerson, if you're on, if you want to unmute and ask your question, and uh, Avery, you can answer that one. Yeah. What kind of qualities as a player do you have that made you get noticed by colleges and the national team? Oh, good question. Oh, good one. Oh, well. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, Stop. <laughs> um, I think one thing that coaches would like point out to me after they recruited me was um, like how relentless I was on and off the ball. I think they really like to see how hard you work to either if you lose a ball or your teammate loses the ball, how hard you'll work to get it back. I think that's like a really good quality that coaches will look for. And it's not one that is – like super teachable it's just kind of you have to have it or like you switch it on um so I think that helped because that's like the drive that coaches want to and like that's what you'd want in a teammate and in a player so I think that one yeah yeah very cool great answer um last question then for me as we're hitting our um deadline of, of time here and everyone's got to get going here in the next couple of minutes and thank you guys so much for, for the time but Bria, I put you on the spot first of all. What do you think, obviously trained with Avery for years and years, mm -hmm. what's her biggest strengths and what makes her the top level player that she is or what's made her like that? Oh. Mm. <clears throat> um. Maybe what stands out. I know now it's yeah. interesting because you've got to be in a locker room going through scouting reports and preparing <laughs> to play against yeah. her and stop her. Um, mm -hmm. I guess what, what have you learned and what makes Avery – Avery and has made us successful over the years. Mm -hmm. I would just say like how hard she's willing to work for her teammates, like at all times. Um, like you can always count on her to, even if you beat, like, even if you get a touch by her, like she's not going to stop until she um, gets the ball or someone else has pressure on it, which is always so annoying, but <laughs> it's a good, it's like a good thing. And she always does this thing where like, if you're running next to her, and you like take too big of a touch she'll just like stick her leg out in front and like turn the other way and like i don't know how she does it but like <laughs> like one-on-one -on -one defensively i would say like she's also very good like um when someone's like physically dribbling next to her or just like holding them off for a shot yeah i i would agree with that Bri. and i think isn't it a huge strength i know you've played with some top attacking center mids now and attacking center mid is always a a position that we get a lot of flair players and we get mm -hmm. a lot of players that can typically do more on a ball than everybody else on the field. Mm -hmm. But but I think Avery's big strength there for, for me has always been her work rate and defensive efforts yeah. too. Like, and I think mm -hmm. when you combine that flair that you need as a number 10, mm -hmm. but also you combine it with that strength and tackling ability and hard work ability, right. that's what to me separates the top center mids from others, isn't it? So cool. Mm -hmm. Avery, same question for you from playing against and with Bria all the years. What, what do you think is a, uh, has helped her or has made her the player she is today? 
Um, I think just she is one of the most uh, trustworthy players I've ever played with. Like, Bria is always the one I'll be like, oh, yeah, I need Bria on my team. I'm never <laughs> worried about, like, her decision-making or I know she's always going to be, like, constant and just always a solid player. And just her view of the field and just individual defending, too. And she's also just a great leader and she sees the field very well. And then it's just always consistent and which is like exactly what you want in a center back. And she's just, yeah, awesome. I think, I think touching on the leadership piece is really important. That's something that, that I would say Bria really picked up in the last few years with us at least and in the club um, and really improved on. I mean, like, like you both talked about the physical piece and the technical piece is really important, but that leadership thing is I think something that you both possess and, and, I witnessed you both improving in that over the last few years, which was really cool. Um, so last one, last one I promise this time, Avery and Bria, both for you. Avery, you can start with this. Any superstitions on game day or any ritual that you have to stick to or anything weird like that that you have to do before a game? Not really. I really like the, the pre-game dance parties, but <laughs> nothing crazy. <laughs> You like to dance before the game? No, like have to eat certain things, have to wear certain things. You'll just go with the flow. There's a lot of things like I can't eat, but nothing like <laughs> <laughs> that I can think of. But Not too regimented, I, huh? Yeah, no. Go with the flow. Okay. Cool. Bria, what about you? Um, I don't know. This is kind of weird, but um, mine's like at halftime. Mine's not like before the game, but every like time at halftime i always like take my shin guards out and like untie my shoes and then like just like tie them back up put my sh like shin guard back in and like pull my socks back up like i don't know why i do it i just kind of always do and i always wear pre-wrap for games like i have to that's not really like superstition or anything but maybe that's just my hair doesn't face, but i just <laughs> always wear pre-wrap <laughs> Well, awesome. That's great. Well, well, thanks again, you two. I, I really appreciate you giving us the time and speaking to some of our younger players. Hopefully our players um, got some insight. And I think you guys, given your real life experiences of club and, and college and, and your experiences with national team and what it takes to get there and hopefully continues there. Uh, I really appreciate so and I'm sure everyone else does. So thanks again for joining us and we'll keep in touch. And hopefully we get to see you guys outside uh, playing with the women's team this summer. That's, that's I know, a goal for everybody. So. Fingers crossed, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank cool. you. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks yeah. a lot. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm.